Good evening, Mr. Chapman. Who are you? I've got nothing to say. No, it's no, no, all no, a mistake. No. We're, we're here Calm to help. Down, yes. I have come your brother to sent us. To find out if you truly are innocent, as your younger brother Wiggins has told me. Mm -hmm. My brother? You we know him very well. Then that means you're... Sherlock Holmes. The one and only. Oh, blimey. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell you everything. Okay. I, I was assuming he would be honest once he found out who we were. You know, his brother having a very good relationship with us. Deep scar, occasional fights. Yeah, grew up on the street, just like Wiggins, I'm assuming. Ooh, that's a hell of a shiner you got there. Um, can we investigate that? Yeah, recent beating. Oh, the cops did this to him. Fancy scarf, downtown fashion, cushy job, office clerk. So he's an office clerk now, but he grew up on the streets. Ah, and he was in prison. Okay. Again, not terribly surprising. Okay, tell us your story. Good. Tell me your account of what happened. Every detail, buddy. I left my work, and I hurried up to see the fireworks in Whitechapel. Okay. I was late, so I decided to cut through off Moon Street. I saw the first fireworks light up in the sky. I bumped into a constable on a corner before entering off Moon. Okay, and I'm assuming that's the constable that, the that was at the flare, scene. I saw two men. They were both lying flat in the middle of the street. So they were already dead when I you got there. I, I thought about turning back to the police, but as I was thinking of that, I saw oh. a third person. He was leaning over the body that was furthest from me. The second I saw him, he raised his head and he stared at me. Oh, interesting. In a flash, I saw his gun. Is, is Mr. Turner actually the murderer as well? Hmm. No, he couldn't have. If, if he actually hoofed it, then it couldn't have been Turner because of his limp. So you might still have had time to return to the constable. I panicked. I, I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I, I approached the bodies just to see if they were still alive. Okay, makes sense. That's had, that's like the, the honorable thing to do. Stomach. He was dying. It was horrible. The second one was already dead. He had a hole in his head. Oh, he was geez. holding a gun in yeah, his Yeah, we, we know that. I took it. And then I followed the That lines day. up. That totally lines up with what we know. Because remember, the, the, the body... The second body, who was shot in the head, is the one that made the second shot in the wall. So the fact that the gun that he took has the two shots fired makes it makes sense. So please continue. Interesting. Pray continue. I turn a corner. So far, no lies detected. Man standing in the middle of the street, he seemed to be in some some sort of panic. And then, Mister hmm. Holmes, something strange happened. I told the police, and they laughed at what I said. But I swear to you, my words were okay. true. All right, tell me. I started running towards him. But then I was blinded by a flash. It oh. was so bright that I hardly saw anything for a good dozen Could it have been seconds, a firework, maybe? But I kept running forward. As I arrived in Whitechapel, I heard a woman screaming. Oh, and right, yes, Polly. The but there wasn't a trace of that man. Of course, then they found a gun Interesting. and all blood. So... I couldn't see the murderer escaping. A man ran by her first, but she Perhaps missed it. I was still half blinded at that hmm. moment. Hmm... A thrilling account, my young man. So far we've found no evidence of this third man. It's always the third man. Layton. It's the one-armed man, I tell you. The person whom you saw standing in Half Moon Street. Well, I wasn't able to see his face at all. Okay. It was too dark, and he was too far Not away. very helpful. Uh, could, could you get approximate height? Hmm. And what about Age? That? Yeah. Nothing so special. He was wearing a jacket. Okay. He was quite average in, in size and his weight. I see. Oh. Was there anything else that Anything remarkable about him? No. Distinctive. But perhaps it's strange, but I can't remember hmm. the sound of his footsteps as he was running away. Couldn't remember the sound of his perhaps footsteps. It's of fireworks or, or the surprise of me seeing him. That is very odd. Okay. Hmm. Uh, why, why did you follow him? Leighton, I confess I am puzzled. Why should a young lad like you take a gun from the hands of a dead man and set off in pursuit of a probable I mean, it killer? seems like the, the right thing to do to try to get Keep to try to get the that, guy. Uh, at the time, it was it was like a reflex. A criminal ought to be arrested. And he was armed. You were willing to risk your life. That was a little mm. foolish. Unless you wanted revenge. Because he no, knew Mr. one of the victims. I was just being brave and stupid. No, 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 no. Hold on. 
the Westgate prisoners. Maybe he knew that guy. Hold on, let's let's check that. So Westgate prisoners. Yes, he's acquainted with one of the victims. I mean, that's a, that's a bit of a stretch because you know they could have spent their time in prison at different times. But I think that's what they want us to use. I'm sure that you were, but I believe that you may have recognized one of the victims, Brian Vacotti. You knew that gentleman well, did you not? Ooh. <laughs> However, could you know that? I mean, that's a bit of you a have guess. You a typical tattoo yeah. of the Westgate Brotherhood upon your hand. I observed exactly the same mark. Oh, it's not Mr. just a... You came to know a, a mark of being in prison, but it's actually like a gang sentence. in that prison. Am I correct, Mr. Chapman? Oh, God. Holmes is good. You're right, Mr. Holmes. Don't lie to him. Okay, so tell me about Brian Vercotti, then. Would you tell me a little about Brian Vercotti? We were convicted for a robbery. Man, it's interesting. What would these conversations be like if we didn't find that information? During that year, we tried to help each other out, you know? Now, you were quite young then, I believe. Yes, Mr. Holmes, we were. We'd only stolen a pound of meat. That's no crime. After we were released and when I saw what my little brother had become, I decided to work towards living an honest life. And Vercotti? Mm-hmm. He had a hard time. His sister had died in a Whitechapel dispensary oh, man, that's while he was rough. in prison. He had no family anymore. Our path split. Oh, jeez. He fell back into crime. Okay. So you lost him? Yes. And for around two years, I heard no news of him at all. Hmm. We shall see you soon, young man. Yeah. I, I fully believe his story. Besides the fact that he, you know, didn't want to claim that he recognized that guy, everything lines up with what we know with the facts. So old acquaintance and two victims? No. In latent statements, maybe? No. Lootless. So what is this personal motive? Gotcha. The violent crime committed in Half Moon Street by Leighton Chapman could have had a personal motive. So I guess the argument is that maybe he saw this guy murder uh, Vercotti. He saw him murder Brian and then tried to get revenge, but it doesn't line up with the, the other shots fired. It definitely seems like they shot each other. Yeah, nothing else here. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I uh, I mean, it, it could have been a personal motive, but I have my doubts. Anyways, we still have another location to check out, though. We still have Half Moon Street. Oh, no, sorry. The pawn shop north of Half Moon Street. The one that's connected to the, the theft of these, you know, priceless Hellenistic pieces of jewelry. Yeah, I do kind of miss wandering around the open worlds, but I, I enjoy the, the, the focus and, and the attention to detail in these areas. I'm pretty sure that's the same. Oh, no, it's just a very similar character model. They have... Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. They actually have, like, a little bit of, like, an interior scene going on there. Yeah, there's much more detail in these areas than the open worlds in, in the previous games had. Oh, oh, this is actually just out of here. Okay. So, here's the pawn shop. I imagine it's... Oh. <gasps> Did he have a key to the... Oh. It's all connected. And this is the pawn shop that was connected... To the thefts of the the Hellenistic jewelry. Uh huh. So maybe he was trying to 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 pawn or like you know make a make a sale. Anything on the counter here? But that means there's still missing cash. Anything in the drawers here? It hmm. looks as Counting as book. Mr. Butler kept a careful yeah. record of his operations. Mm hmm. Oh, what do we have here? The ram's heads. The ram's heads. This Another one of the stolen pieces of jewelry. The five rams of Mytilin collection. Mytilin. Interesting. Hmm. That means that Kenneth Butler owned a part of this yes. collection all this time, ten years after the theft. Wow. Really held on to that for for that long con, huh? All right. What what's the note underneath this? Hello, Kenneth. Oh, oh, I'm definitely going to do this in a terrible accent. Hello, Kenneth. I remember you once told me about three pieces of gold jewelry with ram heads from ancient Greece. You still got them, right? Well, good news for you. I found a man loaded with money who's crazy about those jewels. He's ready to fork out a small fortune. 
I can arrange a meeting with this money bag for you. But I want you to cut me in on the deal. I'll be waiting for you at the crossing of Great Alley and Half Moon Street on Sunday evening before the fireworks. Brian Vercordi. So that's one of the victims. Interesting. Okay. We still are missing a person, though. So that places him why he's there and why it's connected with the jewelry. Is there anything else around here? Because he said there were three pieces of jewelry, right? So there are still only two being accounted for. A flare pistol. Perhaps it was pawned by a destitute sailor. I mean, who else would have a flare gun? Hmm. Interesting. And is there nothing else on the shelf here? Just the flare gun. Huh. Okay. But it's an object of interest as if we, we need to find a, a missing component for it. Okay. But we have another clue, though. So, the butler's jewels and long lost art. No, they're not. Uh, two victims. There we go. Okay. So, burglary motive. The search for the missing Hellenistic treasures could be the motive for the crime that was committed in Half Moon Street. Mr. Turner picked up the bracelet directly after the murder, but the ring is still missing. That's kind of more towards where I'm leading, but still not sure. Okay, so now we also have this, the third shot. And the common statement, yeah, these all connect. This, I don't know how this connects. You know, of course it wouldn't. Okay, good. All right, so... Imaginary man. The person who Leighton Clapman describes in his statement is a figment of his own imagination created to, created to vindicate himself. Maybe, but I don't know. What about here? Disappearing man. Leighton Chapman's statements regarding the jacketed man who disappeared at Habboon Street now seem reasonable, as the three shots at the crime scene prove the presence of a second gunman is now missing. Hmm. So there's theoretically someone who was at the scene, but evaded everyone i mean partially it seems like because literally they have silent footsteps hmm anything on the shelf here crampons and a sharp ice axe would only be brought here by a mountaineer yeah makes sense hmm but we can still look at this again as if they're they they lead to a suspect hmm this is a cool little pawn shop. Okay. So, in our objectives, I'm assuming one of them is going to be an experiment, maybe? Yeah, con to talk to Constable Marrow and find out if it were it would have been possible to miss someone hiding in the shadows of Half Moon Street at the time of the crime. We already know it was really dark there, but... Yeah. I don't know. This is such a cool little area. The Ballard's Pint. That's a great name for a pub. All right, let's go back to the scene at Half Moon. Just around the corner. Uh, a quick little ride in the carriage for, for Holmes and Watson. Hmm. So how could someone have hid there? I mean, it is extremely dark. Oh, there is a little area down there. Why are you looking at me all the time like that? I'm just watching you, lad. I never know what to expect from people like you. Man, Constable. People like me? You need to check yes. yourself. Street beggars and thieves. Wiggins is good people. I ain't a thief. Oh, no. Then where did you get whatever it is that you're gnawing? Holmes. On? I very much or doubt Watson. that you bought it. What ain't seen can't hardly be stolen. Hmm. You need you need to you need to check your your classism. Constable Marrow, I would value your assistance in this investigation. We would love to know if there's a possibility that someone could have Holmes. hidden here when you came down the alley. I would like to make sure or that, that someone there are hit, no snuck their way in. in Half Moon Street yeah. Where a man could hide while you were running through it with your lamp. Mm-hmm. All right, Mr. Holmes, what should I do? Take your I'm lamp curious what this experiment is going to be. How do you, how do you, you try before, for that? And try to find me. Oh. Understood. Are we, do we get to try to hide? This reminds me a lot of the Ripper case where we were trying to, like, prove if someone was, like, visible from certain shadows. Okay. 
So there was an area. Ah, we're playing I as him. See you very well, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. Oh, this is fun. We're, we're, we're trying to find him. Hide. A, a little, you know, Holmes and go seek. Okay, so he's not here. And ah, here you are, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try hmm. again. I'll find another place to hide. That would have been a good spot. Okay, so not here, not here. Ready or not, here we come. Hmm. Where could, whoa. Oh, I thought he was up there for a second. Okay, so not here. This is very bright right now, though. Oh, there you are. Mr. Holmes, it wasn't difficult to find you at all. Yeah. It is obvious now. No one hmm. can escape Constable Marrow's lamp. While so that's a bit of a hole in the, the whole mysterious third man. But again, it's weird that he had such a specific detail of he couldn't hear his footsteps. All right, so corners in sight and his statement. I don't know. Oh, up the wall. So if we can assume that there was one more person in Half Moon Street at the time of the crime, then there was no way forward or back for his escape, only up. Let us reenact the action. Recreate the fireworks described by Leighton and attempt to climb the wall. Aha. Oh, 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 oh. That's exactly why we need to go to the pawn shop, because that's where the flare gun is. So that's that's going to recreate the fireworks. And then we're going to use the climbing gear to literally go up the walls. That is a good way for someone to disappear. All right, back into the pawn shop. Aha. These tools are exactly what I need to climb the wall. Exactly. I do like that this game, I think, has a good balance between the items that you need to find and how you logically, and, and when you logically want to take them. Because a lot of times you'll notice an item and it'll just say, oh, this, this is an is object exactly of interest. What we need in order to imitate the flash yeah. of the fireworks. Perfect, now we can recreate the experiment. Because in the previous games, I feel like you would pick up like every single item and then you would not know when to use them. So you just have to keep applying stuff. This one I feel like has a really good balance for that. And also, like, items that are supposed to be used, they'll let you know that at some point you might want to take a look at them. I feel like this is a really good balance, because also in the last game, or was it the game before it? There were, there were at least in some of the previous games, there were times where you would definitely see, like, I think I should be able to use this, but it just won't let me. And it doesn't even say that it's a pickable item, and then later Wiggins, you'll be able to lad, grab it. What are you doing here? You'd best be leaving and be quick about it. I've done nothing wrong. You'd learn more by watching Mr. Holmes. Exactly. He knows exactly what he's doing. Not like you. Get Oi, stuffed. Watch your tongue. You watch your attitude. All right, so now let's recreate the climbing experiment to see Constable if we can hide Mayor. Watson up the wall. I would like to perform another kind of reenactment with your help. I'm listening, Mr. Holmes. A very I clever escape, but testimony can that means it must have been premeditated, because how else would thin someone air, know that they need to take this climbing moment. equipment with them? But Holmes, I don't see how. I am going to be the mysterious gentleman whom Leighton followed. I will stand exactly where he saw him before he was blinded by the flash. Okay. Watson, you will be Leighton. When I fire the signal flare, you should start to chase me. I understand. Sounds good. You, Constable Marrow, just play your part and do exactly as you did. Just, please, wait five seconds after the signal flare. Okay, yeah, no, this, 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 this all seems like a, a good idea. Earlier. As you say, Mr. Holmes. Hmm. Let us begin, then. Catch so, yeah, this definitely can. seems like the, the, this was premeditated. Someone planned out an ambush because for... for you to have all this climbing equipment on you had to have been something... Oh... Interesting. So there are multiple options. Oh, cool. This is like a branching. Okay. So. Which one makes the most sense, though? Hmm. 
Does it does it matter? I guess which is the maybe they hid in the darkest spot? This one seems like the darkest up here. This wall is cast in shadow. Yeah. It would be difficult to see anyone. That'd be my guess. It seems like the the darkest of the the spots. Okay. And then So the the bright flash. It definitely seems like yeah, someone planned this very elaborate oh Ambush. Oh my god, we're literally scaling the wall. Oh my god. Come on. Hurry. Hurry, Holmes. Nice. Up you go, Holmes. We need to get up this goddamn wall. Oh, <laughs> this is so funny. <clears throat> There's no other way to prove it. I, I love Holmes' commitment, though. Holmes? If he's going to do an experiment, he's going to do an experiment. I guess he did also poison himself earlier, so it makes sense that, you know, he'd also climb the wall. Come on, buddy. My God, a man can't just disappear like that. Oh, but he can, Watson. But he can. Holmes, Holmes, where are you? I cannot see you, Mr. Holmes. That's Dr. right. Watson, it seems that Mr. Holmes has disappeared. It appears Don't he worry, has. Gentlemen, I am up here, above your heads. How on earth did you get up there, Holmes? I am using crampons and a climbing axe. Although mm -hmm. the person we are looking for did not leave any traces of such tools. So how did they Constable, do it? is there any way to get to the top of this building? Yes, Mr. Holmes, I can show you. How the, the hell do they the do it without the tools? From Whitechapel Street. Gentlemen, I am on my way down. Uh, be careful, buddy. Be careful. Okay, so we have, we have now completed this experiment. Now we want to get up to the building here. Is this our way up? Yes, it is. Very interesting. Oh, we're literally in the attic of this place. Oh, cool. All right, so no tools. Maybe they left them behind here. Not seeing anything. Ah. These shards of glass. Someone broke in the window. the window above. Mhm. Mm what do we have here? A jacket. Shabby fabric. So this was used to cover up the the glass. So they could climb through safely. A cluster of thick black threads. They're unusually strong. Hmm. I should examine them under the microscope. Yes, we shall. Anything else here? Broken Someone window. Someone broke through the window yeah. to get inside the attic. But in his haste, he ripped his jacket. Or used it to, like, brace against the window so, you know, he wouldn't slice open his legs. That the person whom Leighton saw climbed up the wall, wow. broke into the attic window, and escaped through the hatch. Hell of an athlete, whoever they are. Okay, is there anything else in here? Did they leave anything? I can't believe it. They, they did it without any tools? Okay. So then we can prove the existence of a potential third mysterious man. Okay, and what do we have here? Leighton's innocence or compelling evidence? Ooh, I don't know. So far, it seems pretty... Pretty suspect that there was this mysterious person here. Hmm. Another wall climber and long lost art. So the man whom Leighton Chapman saw managed to hide from other witnesses and escape Half Moon Street by climbing the wall of a building and entering its attic. Perhaps it's connected to this long lost art. Hmm. Perhaps not. Okay. So I guess we can, as 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 a theory say that in fact he did murder and yeah so it was for robbery yeah Leighton Chapman committed a double murder yep or it was a personal motive and it's a double murder Leighton Chapman committed a double murder Hat Moon Street an old and mutual enmity between Leighton Chapman and Brian Vercotti was the motive for the crime I don't believe this at all I don't believe that. It doesn't make any sense. I think it's definitely a burglary. It all seems connected to these jewels. And that's that's my guess so far. It's a double murder. It's in fact a crossfire. And simultaneous shots at one point. It's just it's this imaginary man that's holding it up. Hmm. Okay. So with that, what new items do we have? Ah, we have to perform the analysis. Yes. Okay, so let's go back to Baker Street and examine the fibers. 
Interesting, and we still have not met this potential person, this mysterious person. Unless we do believe it's Leighton, but I have my doubts. Oh, Toby, you're so good. Hello, Toby. <gasps> All you need now is a shawl and a oh. cap, and you could be Mrs. Hudson's younger sister. Oh, we actually Hello. get to pet him. Hello, to Oh, that's great. Oh, is Danny out? Hey, Danny, how's it going? I heard you shared your recipe with the the secret police. Okay, so let's examine these black threads. They look kind of like hair, but they look way Let too thick. A closer look. Yeah. Maybe it's a fur of some kind. All right, we got the focus. It is not a thread, but a hair. Oh. I very much doubt that it is human. Okay, so it's it looks too coarse, I need too to thick. to compare this sample with a human hair. A and horse, horse hair. hair. Hmm. A shaving brush is usually made from yeah. horse hair. Commonly. Watson, uh, could you please pass me your shaving oh, brush? Oh, don't destroy Watson's nice shaving, shaving brush. Uh, Watson, look. What's outside the window? Well, I don't see anything. Ooh. Ouch. Oh. Oh, don't make such a fuss. One little <laughs> hair. I love that Holmes refused to pull his own hair. But no, no, no. Watson can. All right, so let's examine the three here. They're all... No, this. no. Is a most unusual hair. It's it's not human. Human hair. Yeah, significantly, significantly thinner. thinner than the black sample. And horse, horse hair. hair is thinner than the hair that we found. So, so what could this possibly this be? This black hair belongs to an animal, and it is larger than. Well, it doesn't have to be larger. A hair from a large and exotic. But it definitely animal. has to be one with thicker thicker fur. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So, exotic to animal hair and the wall climber. Hmm. Oh. A circus acrobat. The man who vanished from the crime scene. Of course, who else could scale a 30-foot wall high? A 30-foot high wall. Yeah. Okay. So then... Vanishing Act. The person who was only, uh, was only seen by Leighton Chapman escaped the crime scene by climbing the wall. He was a skillful acrobat. And they took the gun. So I guess that's the main thing that we can prove Leighton's innocent. If we can find the other gun. Okay. So is there a circus in town then? Aha, Wiggins. Okay, so let's go back to Half Moon Street. Since we know Wiggins is hanging out there. Oh, Constable, if you harm a hair on Wiggins' head, there shall be a hell fury like no other raining down upon you. Oh, oh, buddy, you better check yourself. Look here, lad. You'd better go home and start thinking about what a fine pickle your brother's landed himself in. Ha, oh, I don't like this but guy. He'll be free tonight, cause he's exactly. innocent. Exactly. Don't be daft, lad. It's a closed case. Yeah, sure. Uh huh. It would be my pleasure. Yeah. To why, why don't you go home, Mr. huh? Holmes. Why don't you get out of here, Wiggins, buddy? Wiggins. You gotta find us a circus. Mr. Holmes? We have good news for you, Wiggins. Very good news. The investigation has proven very interesting so far. But we've poked we holes in the whole thing. And, details that and we might have a good lead on this innocence. mysterious vanishing man. I knew it, Mr. Holmes. But for now, Wiggins, we need your help. Anything you like, Gov. I need you to locate mm -hmm. a circus that has stopped over in London. It needs to have disposed oh, I wonder of at if least it's an one elephant exotic hair. animal. A very large one. Interesting. You can count on me, Mr. Holmes. Yeah, maybe it's like an elephant hair. Hmm. Interesting. So, at the very least, we, we have a potential new location. I'm assuming that's where we're going the next morning, very early. I do hope that those children don't get into trouble, Holmes. We're trying to get one of them out of trouble. I predict some news in seven seconds. Oh, seven seconds, you say? Mr. Holmes, we found it. <laughs> Here it is. All right. Aha, the Duval Brothers Circus, the greatest show on earth. The marvelous dancing elephant. A young Indian elephant, the ah. highlight of the show. Okay, and anything else? Besides like the name Duval of the show? Brothers. Yeah. A well-known traveling circus 
that is currently stopped in London. Just the I location we're looking exactly for. Exactly the type of circus we are looking for. I'll pay it a visit. Hell yeah. Okay. Oh wow! It cleaned up all the other locations. That's very nice. Okay, so let's let's go check out the circus. Oh, I always love a good circus. It's just, I mean, like, as a location for uh, a mystery, it's always good. There was also the really good one in, oh, it's, um, oh, my God, the Tim uh, Thimbleweed Park. That had a very good circus. Hi, you. Stop right there. Good morning, sir. Pardon uh, me, yeah. why am I not allowed to Isn't this a, a public here? open because circus? Private. Okay. Well, I only wanted to meet the artists. Oh, yeah. Hmm. You're wanting to apply for... Nah. You don't look like the type of uh, artistic lock oh. that we're looking for. Interesting. You surprised. No, we're, we're pretty good at picking nah. locks. I don't think so. Clear off. Let, let's show you our skills. Hmm. Interesting. Ensure that you make up disguise is suitable for entering the circus. Some facial... Oh, I love when we get to disguise ourselves. Okay. Excellent. So we have to make ourselves look like a, a shady, shady figure who, who is an expert in picking a good lock. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. It's a little dress-up time. All right, so we need to start off with some facial hair. Oh, excellent. All right, so... We want to get our worst looking hair possible. Mm, no, too good looking, too good looking. What's our rattiest look? Uh, I guess probably this shaggy mane. Um, yeah, I'd say this. Glasses. Sure, facial hair. Want a, like a nice, terrible looking mustache. Ooh, that's a bad look. I like that. Ooh. Ooh, the goatee is also very bad. I like that. Ooh, this is good. This is good. Okay, so let's go over to the wardrobe then. Ooh, black suit, brown suit, green suit, gray suit. No, these are all too nice looking. Bandit outfit, farmer outfit, sailor outfit, unbuttoned suit. Oh, but why are these locked? I want to use them now. Okay, I mean, bandit outfit seems okay. Hmm, he didn't say that we had enough. Hold on, let's see what it says. Uh, some facial hair, a seedy suit, and a hat. Oh, uh, he specifically want us to have a hat. Okay. All right, what's our worst looking hat then? Hmm, ah, uh, do you know the bowler is, is, is a good look, I think, for, for this terrible... No, it's still not enough. Some facial hair, a seedy suit, and a hat. Is this suit not seedy enough? I feel like we need like a like a seediness scale. Like I need like a bar. Unbuttoned suit. Sailor outfit. I mean, these are all locked. Hmm, casual suit. I mean, it literally says bandit outfit, so I'm assuming that's gonna be good enough. Alright, let's let's go over. Spectacles are unpopular among thousands. Ah. I don't want to arouse suspicion. Okay. Okay. Good to know, good to know. I, I would have figured it made us look a little less like Sherlock Holmes, but I see what you mean. Shabby hat. I thought this was a pretty shabby hat. What's your shabbiest hat? I'm assuming this is your shabbiest hat? It doesn't have a name. I'm glad he's at least telling us now. Oh, there we are. Stay where you are. What are you doing here, and where is Sherlock Holmes? Oh, don't worry about Calm him. Down, Watson. Oh Take my God, person. this it's terrible me. look. Thank God, Holmes. I can't get used to your disguise. Oh, I love this. Thank you, Watson. That means. Oh, that is some terrible facial hair that I am absolutely excited to see in another cutscene. All right, let's go. Let's see. Let's see what debauchery they're gonna have us get involved in.